So, you know, I intimate in my, <laughs> frequently that particularly in the dating realm, we have a significant population who is emotionally unhealthy, you know, um, whether it's whether it's attachment style or unhealed childhood wounds and traumas or adult traumas such as divorce, which can be an incredibly traumatic event. Absolutely. We have a population of humans out there in the dating marketplace who and, and they and just and because my demographic is midlife, which is, you know, between, say, 40 and, and 70, if you will, a significant percentage are divorced. And by the way, by the way that's very kind of you because uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm just at the tip of that spear. But anyway, okay. <laughs> well, you know, I'm just I always say it's after baby making years and before retirement. That's kind of a segment I speak to. But what it occurs to me that we have a lot of humans that have poor relationship skills. Yeah. Um, you know, probably, you know, they might be introspective in one sense of their life, but not necessarily recognizing that they have an attachment issue. And, and even when you said earlier, it occurs to me that I've witnessed people take the attachment test and the way they answer it is the way they believe they are versus who they, where they really do land on right. the spectrum. Right. You know, we're, um, we're, not, we're not as a whole, we're not good self-reporters. I would say so. In fact, I, I almost want to go to the point that we there's a level of delusion about our own, you know, emotional maturity in particular, and not our capacity to pay our bills and things like that. But okay, so I'm trying to formulate a question with this, you know, with what I just shared. But you know, what's the first step to recognizing that you have what your attachment style is and how this affects how you choose people, you know? Um, and how can we identify this even in the dating realm in those, even just when we're meeting someone for the first time? Did I give you enough there? <laughs> yeah. So, so let me just give an idea for your audience what it, what it would look like, sound like to, uh, to be in, we call them islands, uh, islands, anchors, and waves. Uh, okay. Um, islands, the avoidant, distancing, derogating of attachment values. Uh, and um, waves, the the anxious, ambivalent, or as I uh, used to uh, think of them, as angry, resistant. Uh, we call them waves and anchors uh, secure. So, okay, as go. as a wave, I had inconsistent parenting. A lot of come here, go away. Parents that, or at least one parent that was preoccupied and overwhelmed a lot, and needed me to regulate their emotional state too often. And so that's where the self comes first in that camp. And so I, uh, I, I became accustomed to not knowing what to expect, whether I should cling, whether I should distance, whether I should go away, come here, right? All of this uh, uh, makes me angry, makes me angry and ambivalent about you. So okay. I stop grabbing what's mine. I become under entitled. I wait for things to come to me. I test my partner constantly. If they love me, if they love me, do you love me? Uh, and oh. I'm constantly testing. I tend to be negativistic. You give me a compliment. I go, yeah, I know. What do you want? Right. Uh, I push away because I want so badly to feel secure. I, I spoil my own, uh, you know, uh, anything that could be good by dashing my hopes purposely so they aren't dashed for me, right? I'm taking control. And so I am preoccupied, constantly uh, perseverating over, uh, over the relationship, over being rejected. I'm very sensitive to abandonment cues. I'm very sensitive to feeling punished. Withdrawal, very sensitive. And, uh, and I have a lot of... Um, uh, I put a lot of importance uh, emotionally on separations and reunions, right? I'm the person who's more likely at 10 o'clock at night, uh, uh, turn around just before you get, uh, go to sleep and say, um, so how, how's our relationship? Okay. Right. That's what an avoidant, or like that's what no, an avoidant would 
That's what the wave would do. The wave uh, is uh, is the anxious end. Oh, the anxious. Okay, I apologize. Okay, in, okay. The, in the in the clinging group. Hopefully, I didn't confuse them. Yeah, no, um, no. I I got confused. So we were talking about the anxious. So the anxious would say, "How's our relationship doing?" Right before bed. Got that. Got that. Because I'm. Um, it's a bid for connection engagement. Because I I don't like endings. I don't like things uh, closing. Because it yeah, triggers yeah. abandonment for me. Uh, that's the wave. Do you want me to say what the is? So the no, island, I, I want to hear the I want to hear the other one. The island had to take care of at least one parent's self-esteem, right? Okay. And their performance and appearance is an issue, is important in the family uh, as a value. Uh, not uh, face-to-face, eye-to-eye, skin-to-skin uh, over lots of uh, you know time, uh, but more distancing, uh, more expectation of you being independent, son, daughter. Right. And so what happens is the child, the baby is is encouraged to be on their own before they're ready. And they give up a secure base, their their uh, right to cling uh, and to be needy. So as an island, I'm not needy. I don't like needy. Um, I am very secretive. I'm compartmentalizing things all the time. I've spent too much time alone, which means that I have secrets. Right. And so I am afraid that anything I say can and will get me into trouble. So I mm. say the least amount necessary. I am very worried about having my stuff taken, having my independence, my autonomy, very sensitive to being smothered, engulfed. And my only defense is to distance, right? Is to flee. I can only be myself outside of the orbit of this relationship. I cannot be myself yet in the relationship and have boundaries, expectations, and stay engaged. So you have two people who are basically self-absorbed. That's where they're the same. They're entirely one person oriented of me, my, I, and you, you, you. And that is what doesn't work in a secure functioning union. Uh, It's too unfair, too unjust, and too insensitive too much of the time. Well, I've got another question. I've got lots of questions for you, but um, okay. um, all right. I want to come back to the dating environment again, because sure. that's kind of my area. So most women believe that men are the avoidance. Yeah, <laughs> In fact, I, I would say almost all women think men are avoidant. Uh, now, I happen to be an anxious. I mean, I'm very familiar with my attachment style. I'm anxious. I had a mother who would emotionally abandon us as children. And I would making be bids for love constantly when she was stonewalling and being, my mother would go on basically three to five day, the silent treatment to everyone in the house. That's tough. And, and, and I recognize now how that created my anxiety because I wasn't receiving love from mom. I was getting this. Anytime I tried to get a bid for love, I'd be rejected for it. And I would try harder and harder to get her love. But bringing it back to my audience who believes men are avoidant, um, you know, how can they have a healthy relationship with someone who is, you know, that is always looking for the escape clause? You know, what's the way to have a healthy relationship with a person like that? Well, first, in my clinic, in my research, in my experience, um, there are plenty of women that behave, uh, that are in the distancing group, right? Okay. In the distancing group. So Glad you said that. <laughs> we, we, tend to, we tend to overlay uh, gender and sex yeah. through a lot of behaviors uh, where they're not actually about the gender. It's more about the attachment. Yes. And, and it's true that boys are uh, raised differently than girls. And girls also have brains that are a little bit more put together in terms of relatedness uh, because of, of, you know, in terms of our development, relatedness in terms of holding the family together. Uh, The men uh, are protecting the cave, protecting the clan, uh, and are out more. Um, So there is that, the raising of us, but this is more of an attachment issue. So so what to do? If you're dating, you should be Sherlocking, which is fun. That is really tuning in to your observation skills, really looking at everything, looking at gestures, looking at facial expressions, looking and listening to tone of voice, uh, the manner in which this person is talking, how they treat 
help, how they how they talk about their parents, how they talk about their exes. Um, th this is a way to really listen and to tune your people skills, even if the date is boring, even if you'll never go out with this person again, people are interesting. And if you want to learn about yourself and people, paying attention, not you know being obnoxious and grilling people, but yeah. you know, paying attention to what is actually this person doing? What are they, how are they dressing? What are they trying to, uh, to tell me? Do, does this track, do I believe them? Uh, do they seem to be avoiding talking about what is true? Uh, yeah. So there are all sorts of ways to start to pick things up because generally speaking, yeah. people are their best selves when they're trying to get the gig. It's very <laughs> hard to tell because everyone wants to put their best foot forward. Very hard to tell who you're with for about a year, actually. Yeah. Uh, 